Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, I'm going to go over the Nexion Text Select object. It's only available in the Intelligent Display, but my plan is to go over every object available in the Nexion, and so I'm doing that this week. I had really hoped to have a video recording some temperatures and clicking a relay. I want to make a heat map for my basement and maybe for out here. It's a little bit chilly out here, so I thought it'd be nice to have something on the floor. Um, and I'd like to go ahead and make it into a video. So, But hopefully I'll have that ready for next week. So this week I'm just going to talk about the text select. There won't be any Arduino portion of this. It'll all be in the next one. And to show this, I have a simple set up. It's just one page. I have the text select. It identifies as select zero. And then I have a text element and a number element. And the reason I have both the text and the number is because in the text select, you can either pick the value or you can pick the text that's displayed. In this case, I have the, the text also being a number, so it might get a little bit confusing, but I want to show that the value starts at zero. And so I have it set that way to better illustrate that. I'm going to start this in debug just to go over the basic functions of it. What's kind of interesting about this is that it's, it functions with a little bit of physics in it. So when you spin this, you can select four, let's say, or, or go to seven, just like it looks. But you can also go fast, and it'll continue to spin. And the, the problem with that, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Visually, it's kind of neat, but the problem is when I unclick, it reports the value that it was at when you stop or when you release on it. And so that can be a problem and I'm going to address that in this video. The main attributes with this object that I concern myself with are the are the value, the channel, and the path. So the value is what you can say that you want it to start off when you load it. And this, I call it channel, that's not exactly right. It's the inertia force. So it's, it comes set at eight. But if I change this to 32, and I'll run it in debug again, you'll see that it, that it slides a lot more after the release. And then the path is the text that's displayed on it. And when you click on it, it brings up this multi-line text field. And whatever is after a return is another line on the text select. So right now it has 10. I'm going to add 12 just to put it out of order and CC for cheap controls. And so now you can see that it added that. And the other thing is, is it, it spins around. It's like a circle. If you've ever seen the price is right, it's like spinning the wheel at the end of the game. So now that I've set that at 32 and added that, we'll go back and debug just to show you. And now when I spin it, you'll see it'll keep spinning longer. which, like I said, is kind of neat, but it can present some issues if you want to get the value of the object. And so we're going to go on release of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the select.text and the select.value into the fields below. And this will really illustrate what I'm talking about. It'll also go show you the difference between the text select and the value select. So now I have these fields down here, and as I spin it, when I released it, I was on 10, but you can see it kept going to 8. And this is the text, and this is the value. I'll do it again. Now that's interesting, it stopped on CC. But you can see that the value is one less, because it's zero based. And if I go to here and we stop it right on it, you can see that the text is zero, and that's, or the text is one, the value is zero. And if we go up to 2, oh, I had to click on it, release it, because it hadn't quite settled in even that time. So 0, 2, and a value of 1. So now I'm going to show you a couple solutions to address the issue. We're going to leave the value the same. You'll see the value should always be 1 below the text, except for on 12 and CC. And I'm going to comment out this t0.text where it sets that. 
and instead we're going to add a timer. And we're going to leave the timer set to all of its defaults. So every 400 milliseconds the timer is going to execute some sort of line. And I'm going to add this line to, to execute every 400 milliseconds. And all it's going to do is it's going to copy this select text into t0.text. You would think it would be doing it now, but I guess since I haven't spun it yet, it's reporting that text as blank. Probably when I click on it, then it will be... I'm not sure why that happened. We'll look at what the initial text field is, and maybe it's a blank. But as I change it, it changes. But if I really give it a spin, you can see that it continues to change while it's spinning. And then it settles into where it should be. And you can see where, um, if I had just done a release, it would have been 08. Do it one more time. And there. In this case, it would have been 04, so it spun all the way around another time. I'm going to move this over to the side, and I'm going to add a button. So let's say you had a button and you were going to go to another page or you wanted to do something, but you also wanted to make sure that this, this thing had completely finished its spin. And, you, and it wasn't you, the developer, but you wanted to make sure this application or this thing that you were having somebody else use, they couldn't press that without, or hit that button, without this having been done. And the other thing is, is you might not want your timer to continually run over and over and over. And in this case, if we go to the timer, we might want to start it disabled. But if that's the truth, if that were the case, and let's say the timer is only going to run one time, we were going to enable it and then shut it back off. According to Nexion's support, they say that if it's set at 32, the number of the length of time that it continues to spin is about 1.7 seconds. So I'm going to set my timer to 1700, which is 1.7 seconds. And every time we execute the timer and we transfer the value down, we're going to disable the timer again. That way that timer isn't running all the time. It's only going to run when we want it to run. So now we're going to go back to this select zero. And we have this, so we want to start the timer on release. So we're going to set that timer enable equal to one. But in order to stop them from pressing this button, we're going to make it go away. And you do that with the viz command. So I, I believe it stands for visual. But when you set it to zero, it makes the object, in this case B0, vanish. And when you set it to 1, it makes it appear. So when we release this, after we've spun it and we release, we're going to make B0 vanish and we're going to enable timer 0. And then when the timer ex expires at 1.7 seconds, we're going to disable the timer again so it doesn't continue to run. But we also need to make this button reappear. So we're going to add this command viz B0, 1. Now hopefully I've made a few changes and hopefully it works. So well, let's run this and see. So now if I give it a good spin, the button up there should vanish. It should populate the new text field and then the button should come back. And you can see it got the 09 and the button came back. But now we're going to give it a good spin. And you can see that it hit 06, it didn't hit 05. Now I've already played with this a little bit and I thought that was strange, but what's happening is that 1.7 seconds isn't quite long enough. Now it is for most times, like if I just flip it a little bit, it comes in just fine. But if you give it a good spin, it doesn't quite work. What I've found is setting it at about 2000 or about two seconds seems to work. So now we have a two second delay from when you release it to when it goes. And it seems to work pretty reliable. If you were really concerned if this was something you were making for somebody and they were taking it away, 
I might go 2.2 seconds. I don't know that it would matter because you're watching it flip anyway. So you're really not going to hit that button, but you want to make sure you get that value because it, let's say you're using that value on another page. You want to make sure that it's set and stable before you go to the other page. What you can do though is you can read it. Like let's say you went to the other page, you could make this select global and then you could read from it and hopefully by the time you went to that page it would be set and stable. Now the other question would be is if you flip the page and then you read it and it was in the middle of changing where would it be? I'm really not 100% sure. I'm going to go ahead and set that up next and we'll see what happens. I set up the second page. I have this button that goes back to page 0 or page 1 however you want to look at it and then on the post initialize I'm going to take that T1 down here and I'm going to set it back to page 0 select 0 dot text and we're going to bring it across. On page 1 I commented it out the viz command so that way that button isn't going to go away we can click it whenever we want. So I'll show you this in debug. So now if I, if I spin that you'll see that this still works Now you're going to want to pay attention and maybe the editor can slow this down or something and see where it is when I hit that button. And you can see that it's at an 8. And if I go back to page 1 it's at an 8. But you can see that it's actually going by. Well that wasn't a good example. Let me go back one more time. You can see that it's still flipping and that it was on a 2. The 2 was blue anyway it was changing to 1. If I go real fast it would have continued to go by but when we go back it's at that value. So it almost appears that it doesn't continue to go. Wherever this is sitting when I hit this text and leave the page the inertia portion or the the built-in thing that makes it kinda of look cool where it keeps spinning stops right at that moment the second you leave that page and it holds it at that value because you can see there it was still spinning and I went back and it's at 1. I don't think it's spinning beyond. Oh that wasn't a good one again. Let me see if I can get it right before it's going to change. That one looks like it might have changed to 9. I believe that one would have changed to 2. That one definitely would have changed to 6. So you can see that it kind of locks it in place. I don't know if that's good or bad. That's just a, a thing that the Nexion does with their text select. So to review, what I did is I just am going over the text select function. The only three variables that seem to be different in it are the value, the channel, and the path. And the only reason I mentioned the value is because the value and the text a lot of people read off the text value. Oh, and, and at the beginning where that was zero, here it does start as a blank, and that's probably why this new text came up as a blank that first time. But the value and the text are looking at the same point, but you do look at it in different ways. And then the CH, which I call channel, it just shows how fast the wheel is going to spin. You can set it from zero to 32, and zero is supposed to have zero inertia, or it's not supposed to spin at all. But I found that it does a little bit, so you can't really trust that it's going to be exactly where it is instantly. And then the path, when you click on it, you can add things to what's displayed. And if you want another option, you have to put a return and then type something. And then click OK and it will add it. And you can see it there. If you want to change the width, that's on here too. So in that case, since I added the option, it's a little bit bigger. So we'd probably have to go maybe 120. And then you can see the width. I believe you can also, yeah, you can drag it too. Sometimes I like to use these values down here for all of my elements, the X, Y, and the width and the height. And then that way I can position things and see if they're lined up right. So this is just a simple video over a simple object. There wasn't really a uh, reason for this video. I, I wasn't working on a project or anything. Yeah, I just found it kind of interesting. I want to make a video on each command and object on these displays just kind of for fun. It helps me make better videos if I make these simpler ones. Uh, hopefully it makes the other ones better and, and hopefully I'm getting a little bit better over time. Um, we'll see.
Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.